by recognizing that there is, let's say, irritation, anger, or anxiety in you, you are no longer completely identified with it. Whenever you are impatient, trying to get somewhere, waiting for something impatiently, what's the next thing I have to do, and I have to do that, and you're pulled in all kinds of directions, what's now, oh, now I have to do that, and that, and that. And there's always the pull to the what's the next thing. Uh, that is, I call that sometimes, you lose yourself in doing. Doing is necessary, obviously, you need to do, but to lose yourself in continuous doing is a serious dysfunction, but it's so normal that nobody realizes it. So what, if you lose yourself in the doing, there's always another, th and this is how stress arises. What's, stress is the gap, in the gap between now and later, the projected then, now and then, in that gap arises, the stress arises. So the mental projection towards future creates the stresses between where I'm here, but I want to be there. <laughs> and for many humans, that is their predominant state. They are always, they are here, but they, don't, they really want to be there, either there in space or time. Uh, it's amazing, and, and even you, awakening beings, may still, sometimes or often, find yourself in that state where you'd suddenly realize that the whole day you've been stressed about this, that, and that, and that. This the world that makes so many demands upon you need to deal with this and this and this, amplified by the gadgets that we now use, which is an amplification of the dysfunction through this, uh, and you lose yourself in the doing. You become completely uncentered and, and basically lost. There are many, uh, even, it happens even to children already at an early age these days. And many children are suffering from attention deficit disorder and so on, which means their, their, their mind is being pulled always away from the present moment. So lost in doing. Lost in doing really comes back to lost in thinking. Thinking underlies doing. So you are lost in your thoughts about the world. And then you engage in all kinds of activities propelled by thought that I now I need to do this, now I need to do that. So the basic condition still for, for most humans on the planet, so fundamentally, yes, they are lost in doing, they lose themselves into, but basically it means they are lost in their mind, in the movement of thought. What now, you identify then, they identify with every thought that arises, and the th many thoughts are about future or the past. Not that many thoughts are about the present moment. And if they are about the present moment, then it is an interpretation of the present moment that is completely determined and colored by your past conditioning. So, very interesting to observe in oneself this tendency to deny, devalue, disregard, reduce the present moment to a means to an end. It's always a means to an end, but it's never rec recognized for what it is in itself. And often it is not, it is more than a means to an end for many humans. This is a very dysfunctional way of being. For many humans, the present moment is actually regarded unconsciously as an obstacle that they need to get beyond. 
this con a continuous underlying unease. And what's the next thing that's, that's going to go, go wrong? I know it's going to happen. Lost, lost in the mind, lost in thought. There was an Indian teacher who described the essential human condition as lost in thought. And of course, that's how it is. This is then, this movement of thought gives you your sense of identity. Then, then the, the, unease, the, the, the uneasy narrative, the problematic narrative of me and my life, I have to think about this when I wake up in the middle of the night and I carry this heavy burden of my problematic life. For many humans, their identity is unconsciously regarded as a problem to be solved. I am a problem that I'm looking for a solution to this problem <laughs> that I am. <laughs> and of course, then you go to a therapist. No, if the therapist is good, he might be able to take you beyond that. Depends. If he or she is not good, then you get more deeply entrenched. And 15 years later, you are still undergoing psychoanalysis and find ever deeper layers of complexity in your past. And there's no end to it. So, the present moment is devalued, not recognized, regarded either as a means to an end or an obstacle. That is the for many humans, that is their predominant state of mental emotional state. And their, as I said, their identity is derived from that. So it's the, the, the error lies in identification with thought. Now, the question arises, who or what is it that identifies with thought? If I am not the story that I tell myself about who I am, if I am not ultimately that, then who or what am I? And what is it in me that, that identifies with the story? What is it that creates this sense of identity that is mostly exists mostly in a state of unease or very often discontent because it, it cannot acknowledge the present moment. That is the ego, by the way. That's what we call it, the, the egoic sense of self. There's a very simple spiritual practice to get you to the realization of who or what it is that identifies I suggest at this moment that observe yourself internally right now to see if there's any lingering emotion in you, perhaps from earlier today or an hour ago or yesterday or the past two years or the past 10 years, is there any, and can you feel, for example, if any, is there an irritation somewhere? Is there some kind of uh, anxiety? Is there kind of uh, uh, heaviness, a certain heavy mood, a despondent mood, perhaps? Is it lingering there? Is there Anger, anger, big thing. Some residue of anger from what happened earlier is that in you. And then normally humans would say, I am angry. Or they would say, I am anxious, I'm fearful, I am in a bad mood. 
Now, there's already a delusion when the moment you say, I am angry or I am anxious, that indicates already that you have identified with the emotion of anger or the emotion of sadness or the emotion of fear. You have identified, you equate I with what arises in your field of consciousness. So you say, I'm angry. It would be more correct to say, there is anger in me right now. Now, it may sound a trivial difference be between saying, I am angry and there's anger in me, but it, it, there's a significant difference which goes beyond mere syntax, how you put words together. Because when you say, I am, you equate I with whatever condition is there in you. This applies to emotion and it also applies to thought. When, because anger is often, it's not just the anger as emotion, the anger also exists as angry thoughts. And then they, they, inf they reinforce each other as a vicious circle. When you, when, they, when you are trapped in irritation or anger, the emotion feeds the thought, and the thought feeds more energy to the emotion. It's a vicious circle, and you don't want to get out of it. You might notice when you observe an angry person or, or a despondent person or an anxious person, they don't really want to be free of the anger. They don't want their... <laughs> If you suggest it to an angry person, you can be free, you will not get a, a pleasant answer. <laughs> and you, you've seen angry people who, they are in the grip of anger or irritation, they cannot help it, then they shout at you and then they leave the room and a minute later the door opens, they come back because they sort of something else to insult you with. <laughs> they, they, they are in the grip of it. There is co complete identification with thought and emotion. They are lost in thought. They are lost in emotion. But who or what is it that is lost? <laughs> if I'm not the thoughts and the emotion, who or what am I? Okay. I just asked you to just have a look inside yourself and see what it is, if there's anything there that's jarring and doesn't feel good, but it's there. And I'm not saying try to get rid of it, no. Acknowledge the present moment. The present moment is what is, externally or internally. That's what is. But there's a huge difference now. You've already, by recognizing that there is, let's say, irritation, anger, or anxiety in you, an additional element or dimension has come in. And that dimension we could call awareness, or we could call it presence. And the moment awareness comes in, you are no longer completely identified with it. One could say, I sometimes describe it as, let's say, there's the anger, and as your awareness of the anger comes in, there's a little bit of space around it. That's the awareness. The awareness knows that there's anger. The anger may still be there. It may not immediately disappear, but the awareness knows it's there or whatever else it may be. The arising of awareness is spiritual awakening. The disidentification that happens when awareness arises, that is the spiritual awakening or the arising of the transcendent dimension of consciousness. Transcendent because it transcends who or what you are as a person. Yes, you are still a person. You have your personality, you have your memories that hasn't changed. You have, still have a narrative in your mind, what you call it, your life. But it's no longer, it be, there begins to be a shift. A shift from 
identifying with that which arises either on the level of thinking or on the level of the emotion to identifying with or being the observing conscious presence. That is, that is the awakening out of identification with form, thought forms, emotional forms. So there's, this is where, when you realize thought, thoughts that go through your mind, in the unconscious state, you, the thought has you in its grip. The thought, you don't think in the unconscious state. Thinking happens to you, <laughs> and you can't help it. The thinking, the, the thinking mind does what it wants to do, and you don't even know that there's anything other than the movement of thought in you, because you, you, you're so in the grip of it that there's nothing beyond that. So every thought that arises becomes the truth for you. It, it's, it's, it, it has you in its grasp. Every, you, uh, uh, one way of putting it is you say, you believe in every thought that, that comes into your head, <laughs> no matter how crazy, that suddenly that's how it is. And then you, if you look on the internet where people <laughs> communicate with each other on social media and so on, you can easily see how a person's opinion becomes their identity. <laughs> now, an opinion is, is no more than a form of thought, a movement of thought, a certain mental position. Opinion turns into identity. And then, because opinion has turned into identity, anybody who has a different opinion becomes threatening to you because you, you, it, it's your identity, your sense of self. <laughs> it's a fiction, but it, this person becomes your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> so when thought becomes identity, then anybody who questions the thought that you had identified with is the enemy. And that's a deeply unconscious thing for human beings to be trapped in, a very unconscious state, and it wreaks havoc on the planet because it also happens collectively. Identities, there's a collective identity too in groups of people, nations, tribes, religions, or movements within religions, and so on. So the, to free yourself from that, that's the, that is spiritual awakening. 